you know, I sit on the board of a, of a retail industry board and, you know, here I am with some the most interesting and inspiring CEOs in the world. And, you know, many of these issues that are coming at them, there is no playbook and having places and forums like what you've created for people to have those conversations and be unsure and share like what's not clear is, is so, so incredibly valuable. How do you help them um, prioritize? Because uh, uh, although, you know, whether it's experiences and relevance, brands with purpose or tech and tooling, you know, those are like all big meaty topics. Um, what, what's your guidance there? So, so I, I think, I mean, one of the one of the big things that have become evident, I think, uh, as we've been living through the, the the last couple of years, is that marketing has just, you know, increasingly, and it's happened over a long period of time, as we all know, become more and more complex with more data, uh, more tools, more at our fingertips, more channels, and so on and so forth, and. It, it, what's become clearer and clearer, I think, if you look at those that are succeeding and cutting through, is that there is a big theme around decluttering and making the complex simpler and being quite ha harsh when it comes to what you do and don't prioritise. So that's probably where we would start with our clients to sort of sit down and say, out of all the long list of priorities that you think you have, what are the ones that are really going to matter and are really going to shift the needles, uh, sh shift the needle? And it's almost as empowering, actually, not to choose to do things as it is to choose to do things. And it's not to say that those things you choose not to focus your human resource on won't happen at all because there could be other solutions so you know in modern day and time you might automize certain processes so it often goes back to looking at you know what what's that particular process trying to achieve how can we either simplify it how can we actually put some tech in place that can do it for you that then frees up all your fantastic talent that you've got in your organization to be able to grapple with you know those two or three really big meaty things that that need to be done um and uh, and there are those out there. It probably takes a great deal of brave leadership uh, to say, here is, you know, here is what, and it takes vision. So here is where we're going and here is how we're going to do it. And then, you know, it's this is not about just about marketing, is it? This is about their cross-functional colleagues and really thinking about, you know, what can we do together that is really going to sort of have an impact with our, with our customer and, and consumer. That's great. I think, and I love that you use the word like decluttering, because I think we all know that, like back to the, the first part of our conversation, we all know that sort of in our personal lives, but we let our work and our priorities get get cluttered. And then the way we feel about clutter, it's hard to know what's really the most important. So um, it does take a lot of courage to actually like say no to things and pick Huge the amount. most important. It's <laughs> much <laughs> easier, much easier. I think we, we both know from it's much easier to say yes, 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 than it actually is to say no and mean it and walk away from something or think very differently about how you're going to, how are you going to approach it going forward? And and the, the interesting thing is obviously, as we've been working with our CMOs and as we've seen how things are evolving, what becomes quite evident, we did a we did a big study last year that went out to about a thousand or just over a thousand senior marketing people and looked at actually how do they relate to their customers now and what what are they learning and how are they doing doing things differently? And and what was very clear in that was that they navigate very differently and you've got one end of the spectrum that is probably feeling quite overwhelmed and are not able to actually move because they can't, you know, back to your clutter, they can't see beyond the clutter. It's just too much coming at them. They are not able to, or haven't been able to prioritise. And as a result they're standing still or, or actually in many cases going backwards so really dangerous place to be uh, thankfully as a smaller group uh, about 17 percent was the segment that came out of this study that are really struggling and and we we've called them the survivors so they are very much in survival survival mode 
And then you've got a, a bigger group in the middle, uh, about two thirds um, that we call the strivers. So they can see their way to they they can see the challenges and they recognize that the challenges are not going to go away. They're here to stay. You know, consumers and customers are changing for good. But they don't always have perhaps the tools or the approaches at their fingertips to know how to relate to that differently and move forward at pace uh, in a slightly new new direction. And then, of course, as ever, you know, you've got this most amazing, admirable group of that we've called the thrivers who are bringing everything that they need to be bringing in terms of bold leadership, vision pace and and they have found a way of cutting through the clutter uh, and they are going pl places very fast you can see in everything from customer satisfaction to uh, their performance measures everything is outperforming the rest by by some way and again it's it's again a similar group to the survivors about 17 percent but growing and and obviously what those cmos that are feeling a bit more behind the game are looking to learn from and understand is what we you know what is going on with those what is it that they are doing that i haven't yet <laughs> that i haven't yet got to um and and that's fantastic to you know to see those sparks and when they have are having those conversations and learning from one another is is just brilliant so what are i mean you talked about sort of being bold having a vision being able to sort of cut cut some of the clutter but um, I, I mean, every nobody wants to just be a survivor. I don't think. Um, how? What? What do you see, or what advice do you give to sort of have more thrivers, or get those of us who sometimes feel some days I feel you know in a certain meeting I feel like I'm a thriver, but then by the end of the day I'm just barely a survivor. So how do you how do you help um, get people more in that um, thrive zone? And do you know what, Shelley, that I mean, you make a, such a good point. And most of our CMOs have said, said exactly that. They said, actually, I don't associate with being firmly just in one camp because certain days or certain weeks, you know, I feel like, oh, my goodness, I'm just doing it, doing just enough to hang on in there. And then other weeks or, you know, at other times I feel like, yeah, I've got this and I'm, I'm going places. And so so that's it. That's really important. It doesn't necessarily categorize as starkly as that but talking about a few of the themes um of the thrivers is i mean the first thing i think they have they are doing incredibly well is they are they are recognizing that the changes that have happened were happening and are happening at pace and they're here to stay so they're not sitting back waiting for things to get back to normal at all they are recognizing this this is new the challenges are new and these are things we need to lean into here and now and and perhaps where they've had a bit of an advantage many of them is that they have invested ahead of time so many of them might have invested in some of the tech that you need and the platforms that you need to be able to do, for example, social listening. So you can always keep a finger on the pulse, always be part of the conversation, know what's going on with your customer and reacquainting yourself with your customer. A bit like we talked about at the beginning of our conversation is oh so critical. And I think that's where they really shine um, and they couldn't be more in tune with and actually excited as well about the dynamic of these people it, their sort of lived experience of things around them change they change and they are looking for different things so they fully embrace it they're really on it and they have got the they're equipped with what it takes to actually be able to do it organizationally not just one or two individuals but the whole of their businesses and organizations and and also very good at making sure that their processes are data literate so you are feeding the right processes with the right data so even if you are for example a creative you have got the data at your fingertips to be able to sort of you know match up the the art and the science and and also to create I guess if you were a marketing leader and a CMO 
a narrative in the business that is a data driven narrative that can help galvanize that whole cross functional team. As you and I both know, it takes a huge cross functional effort to be able to do the right thing by the by the customer. So so that closeness is really important. And I think also finding finding your difference, finding what it is about you that really sets you, set you apart. And I, I said earlier, I think that purpose is very high on, on many CMOs agenda. And then not just being able to define what your purpose is, but be able to take that out to the organization and almost evangelize around it and making sure that people can see in different functions, can see the role for them, what they can contribute, what value they can add, and how all of that sort of ladder us up to something that is just going to be superior and fantastic and you know better than anybody else can can do out there so so that's something else uh, something else that they do uh, pace uh, we've mentioned i think a couple of times uh, being able to move at the pace of change or actually ideally ahead of the pace of change so you need to be able to be just slightly abreast of your consumers and the market uh, to be able to you know not follow the moves but anticipate the moves and put in place what you need and again again it helps if you are slightly ahead of the game you can then sort of continue to invest and make sure that you invest in in the right places so so that's important and that's something that we see the the thriver thrivers do um Again, to take uh, off the load, and we talked about earlier, you know, what are some of the things you choose not to do? Figure out with your marketing team, what is it that people don't want to do? What are some of those repetitive tasks that we can just take to one side, get, you know, a different solution for that just, you know, be it, I don't know, compliance related, or it could be translations, or it could be something else that we could just, you know, take out of the equation to try and ease the load and free up some of the time. That's something else that they do. And I guess as a result, they get the best out of their marketing is and and cross-functional colleagues as well for that matter because you've got people now connected with what they care about and what they were excited about doing as opposed to you know going through the day job and accept accepting that it's got some of those things that you know we all would prefer not to do <laughs> if we if we could at all choose to um so yeah and then really own you know celebrate what you're all about and and own what you stand for and make sure that that's shared and create I guess you know create and build culture around that so on the inside of the organization these thrivers tend to have lots of advocates who are living breathing it who are great representatives of that particular brand and take that in turn out to the market to their to their customers and consumers and 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 really deliver you know a superior superior customer experience so so that's how that's how they roll the thrivers or those that we rolled on those days when we're in thri in thriving mode and that's what's so excited and when you look at the stats i mean these people report that as much as 86% of their people are you know really motivated really excited despite you know the many conversations we've had about how difficult things around us um have been for for the for the last couple of years so they are really going places they're excited about going there they show a great deal of bravery uh, bold leadership um and they they are you know Take, taking an approach that sort of cuts through declutters and, and allows them to sort of follow a follow a new and fresh and different path. I love uh, I just love what you shared uh, because you've given me and all of our listeners, you know, I think we all kind of know it when you're with a thriver, <laughs> you know, and they're setting the vision, they're adaptable, they get help you get rid of what's not important. They're moving at, at a different kind of pace, just as you're saying. But I've never really sort of like peeled it back and said, okay, what are some of those qualities? Uh, how do I, how do I embody them myself? How I bring, how do I bring them to my team? So it's just so valuable to hear you really break it down and then almost set a standard for all of us who, who want to be in that, in that thrive driver segment. Um, we want to be part of that 17%. Yeah. 
And and I think, you know, we also, all of us, we need some, you know, we need that excitement in our lives. It has to be about, you know, opportunity and future and what what's the art of the possible. Uh, and I think, you know, that's one thing that being a passionate marketeer, there has always been that sort of, you know, uh, excitement and, and passion around what what it is that that we do in in service of our uh, in service of our customers. Uh, that will hopefully, you know, lead to their happiness or make their lives easier or whatever the ultimate outcome is that you're going for. And they do that, as I didn't mention that, that's something else they do very well. So instead of just setting KPIs to give meaning to people inside of the organisation, they set CPIs or consumer customer performance indicators. And they are very, very clear about what is the outcome that they are looking to achieve for the customer. And they keep bringing everything that that they do back to the outcome that they are looking for for that customer. So uh, it really focuses this, the mind, and it's probably the best I've seen to date uh, around customer centricity. So it's something we've talked about. It feels like we've talked about it forever, but this is the first time I've seen you know leaders, marketing leaders who really mean business and who really sort of follow through in every aspect of what they do. Um, and they're very, yeah, it's very exciting. It is. And, you know, I actually, you're reminding me, I had a conversation with um, someone who leads um, executive recruiting for CMOs. And he, you know, he's actually renamed their whole practice from the CMO practice to the customer activation and growth practice. Um, and, you know, it's it wasn't just like shifting the label, but he actually found, I love the idea of a, instead of a KPI, a CPI of a customer um, performance in, in, indicator, I guess it is. Indicator, uh, yeah. Indicator, because um, they actually found in this study that um, when you mapped sort of the um, kind of traits of a CMO, they were the most like the CEO in terms of a, a CEO's leadership team. And the yeah. only place where they were really different, I don't know if this is what you found, is actually um, the CMO actually tends to be even further out than the CEO in terms of innovation, yeah. um, you know, kind of where the blue sky is. And that's actually why they were saying there's more changeover in CMOs than, than CEOs is because sometimes, that CMO can be further out than the organization is almost even ready um, for, for, for to be. So it's just super interesting. A hundred percent. And Shelley, on the theme of innovation, um, that's definitely, if you look at those thrivers and you compare them to the survivors, for example, they're 40% more likely to be out there driving innovation, look at, always looking for fresh thinking and bringing, bringing that in. So that's another, another thing, another string to their bow that they do incredibly well. And you're right, I think they are absolutely you know as far far out as as you and you should be as a growth as a growth leader uh if you f fully embrace your role as a growth leader as a, as a as a cmo uh then that's absolutely where you would want to see yourself so uh yeah the the role and 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 often seen i think in, in many organizations as the co-pilot of of the ceo Absolutely, absolutely. So as that co-pilot and for all of our uh, CMOs and for all of our listeners out there, um, this is hard because I bet you have a lot of advice to give, but if you had, does, do you have a Nina's top three of um, sort of advice you would give to CMOs as they're navigating to even just the balance of 2022? Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, not looking on balance at everything everything you could be doing is I'd say move, move, don't rest on your laurels, move at pace. Uh, I think we all know what got us here is not what's going to get us there in the future. So it, this is just a time to sort of be, pro, be proactive, uh, be bold and, and daring and go out there. And yes, you're going to have to make a few bets, but that's better than being paralyzed and, and standing still. And uh, so, so keep moving would be the first one. Otherwise, you will most definitely be, be left behind in the current climate. If you haven't already got a clearly defined 
purpose, then that's going to be time incredibly well invested in uh, thinking about what it what it could be and, and developing one, because that's going to gain and benefit you and the whole organization and the context in which in which you operate. So I think that's really, really important. And then probably last but not least, I think as a marketeer, and that's one thing I've always loved throughout my career to work not just in isolation as a marketeer, but just to work with the rest of the organization. So think about your leadership but in your role as a CMO, think about your leadership expansively. Think about, you know, how do you create that that bold vision so that you can, with, as the leader of, of, of the overall customer experience, how do you create that following in the organization so that you've got everybody working? It won't be in perfect harmony, it never is, but how, how do you create that sense of, you know, we're in it together, we are one team and we're pulling together to do great things for our customers and consumers uh, and he, here is for why this is what we're all about. That, that would probably be those would be my advice so you know I've always been impatient so it was always going to have to be about about pace but you know move, move at move at pace have a really clear purpose and bring people together and uh, and collaborate and you know it's fascinating what you learn from I think from colleagues from other functions from other parts of the business other people who touch the customer experience that may have little to do with your day job but I always uh, think that together we do better a lot better wow <laughs> well you've decluttered my brain so <laughs> <laughs> that was really so incredibly helpful in terms of keeping moving, having purpose. And I really love what you shared in terms of expansive leadership. Um, you know, it's obviously true for CMOs. I think it's true for almost anyone who wants to operate at scale today is, um, like you said, thinking beyond your day job. Um, for me, that's what actually gives me the most pleasure too. Uh, obviously, we got to deliver the numbers. Um, but it's almost like what's next and how do I think beyond my day job? That's where I get my my energy. And I would imagine that's how your your thrivers and your community get their energy. Yeah, most most definitely. Most definitely. That's exactly what we what we hear from others um, and where we where we generally get our energy from, I think. So well, Nina, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I, again, I, I think we could have spent a lot more time. This feels like just the beginning. And um, I was following you on LinkedIn. You, there's so many great topics that you're raising. So I encourage everyone out there to to check out Nina Holdaway on LinkedIn. And um, please, you know, as always, share more feedback or questions from this edition of Taking Stock Live. And for now, I just want to say a huge thank you to Nina and for all of you for tuning in today. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I've thoroughly enjoyed it.